Good morning, everyone, and thank you for participating in today's webinar, Scopus Live Question and Answer Session. To introduce for you our presenters for today, we have Lucia Skumbi, Senior Customer Consultant for Research Intelligence at Elsevier, and Dr. Yahya Issa, Customer Consultant for Research Intelligence at Elsevier as well. And myself, Nadine Iskander, Customer Consultant, Elsevier Core Products at Elsevier. So to share with you some rules and housekeeping for today's webinar, all participants are and will continue to be muted uh, throughout the webinar. And we encourage you to submit your questions and, and uh, uh, any comments that you have on the uh, demo or the webinar in form of questions in the Q&A box. Uh, the presenters are going to moderate the questions and answers in the box live during the webinar. After the webinar, we'll be sharing a recording uh, of the whole webinar on Elsevier Africa on YouTube. There will be no certificate for this webinar as it is only Q&A session. I hand over to my colleague Lucia to start a demo on Scopus. Lucia, you're there? Yes, good morning. Can you hear me well? Yes. Um, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for joining us today. Um, I'm going to share a few uh, slides with you to give you a brief introduction about Scopus. And then I'll also go over live into Scopus and share with you um, how to use Scopus. Right, so what we're going to do, just a few slides that I'm going to cover is what is the coverage? So what uh, can you expect to find within Scopus? And also, how would you use uh, Scopus? Um, and then importantly, why would you use Scopus? So what does Scopus make different? What is different about Scopus um, than from other information databases? So firstly, what is Scopus? In summary, you can say that Scopus is a global database for discovering academic literature, um, but it also includes visualization tools and metrics to measure research performance. Um, it is source neutral, which means that it does not, but it, that it covers a whole number of, of publishers' uh, journals. Um, and Scopus is also linked to the material that uh, that your specific university has uh, subscribed to. So in those cases where the university has subscribed, you will have full text also uh, to the material. Otherwise, Scopus is a bibliographic database. Sorry, my this. I'll continue in a second. There's just a hiccup on my screen. Right, so as I mentioned, Scopus is one of the largest information databases. Um, it contains almost 80 million items. Um, the most of these are scientific articles, uh, which are published by more than 24,000 journals from more than 5,000 publishers, of which Elsevier is one of the publishers. So the content from Elsevier within Scopus is about 10%. Um, in the, because the, the information are all linked together in a unique way, we are also able to, to create affiliation profiles and author profiles. Um, so for every publication that is added to Scopus, it links the publication to an affiliation and it also links to an author. And in that way, we are possible, it is able for us to do also analysis um, on how, what is the performance of uh, universities, what is the performance of an individual researcher in terms of the number of publications and the number of citations. So it is also very comprehensive in the sense that it covers a various uh, number of uh, languages, more than 40 languages. Um, it is very current, it is updated on a daily basis, it covers multiple types of material, so journals, 
and conferences, books and book series. And it doesn't make a distinction between subscription material and open access material. So at the moment, there are more than nine million open access documents uh, within Scopus. So you can see from the screen also that the subject distribution uh, is, is, is quite equal. So it is divided into three, uh, four broad categories, physical sciences, health sciences, social sciences, and life sciences. It also contains more than 8,000 articles in press. So it gives you very, very current information. So even those articles that have been accepted for publication but have not been published yet are also available in Scopus. Covers more than um, um, 9 million conference papers um, and uh, more than 2,000 um, books as well. These books are mainly focused on, on social sciences and arts and humanities. So to, for journals to be added into Scopus, they go through a very rigorous, re um, they, they go through a rigorous evaluation process. So they need to comply with a number of criteria. Um, one of the most important criteria is um, that it has to, that the journal has to be peer reviewed and also that there must be a, um, that the journal must also have an ethical um, standard that it, uh, that it complies to, to make sure that all the journals that we have within Scopus have, um, that they comply with a very high standard. So less than a half of the journals that apply to be indexed by Scopus are actually uh, approved and then indexed within Scopus. So the reason why we do this is importantly so that the information that you retrieve from Scopus is of a high quality. Right. So all of this information, all of this, the data, the statistics that we have, um, that I have mentioned to you can easily ask, so what? And I want to share with you why it is that Scopus is different and why it is important when you're doing research to use Scopus. So one of the most important reasons is the comprehensivity of Scopus. It's a very large database, which then helps you to ensure that you don't miss out on important literature. So when you're doing your literature research, you're very sure that you have covered globally the most important publications within that specific field. Another important reason is because Scopus provides uh, abstracts, and those abstracts really help you to be more relevant, to to be more efficient in your research. So it's a very quickly, um, a more quick way of um, being able to distinguish whether a, a a publication is relevant to your specific topic. Peer review, as I mentioned, is a very important criteria for all journals. Um, to be indexed in Scopus, um, and, and this is really because it, it, uh, it gives you the assurance that the material that we cover in Scopus is of a scholarly academic nature, and that really provides a very good foundation for your own work to be scholarly. Citations are very useful, of course, because they help you to retrieve the most to identify the most important publications within a field. So it is usually accepted that those publications that have the most uh, citations, they've really been endorsed a lot and that gives you um, an indication of, uh, of the quality of, of an, ac an acceptability of that paper within a research field. So citations really help you to do that, but it also helps you to find uh, literature that is not always findable through the keywords because it links publications based on citations. So it is a better, it's, a, it's an improved way of finding literature. Scopus also provides you with analysis tools so that you can identify the trends within your research area. It does not only give you a list of all the relevant papers in a field, but it gives you a trend analysis. So what is the increase of publications within a specific field, for example, and who are the most important researchers in that field? Which institutions are 
contributing to that field? Which are the funding institutions that are funding the research within that field? So these kinds of trends and patterns within a research area are, ve are, are very important in terms of really mastering your, your research area. So I'll go over um, into the demo now and in the demo I will also show to you our author affiliations um, and our, pro and our um, journals and, and how these also um, help and support you to improve and enhance your, your research. So I'll just give me a moment to change my screen. Okay, so this is the Scopus homepage. And as you can see right at the top in the horizontal navigation bar, you will find that there's a search option. There's also sources, uh, lists, etc. The two important ones, search. So this is from the main activity and then also a list of all the journals and all the functionality around journals that you will find in Scopus. Right to the on the on the right hand side, you will also find profile information. So um, I'm already signed in. If you are not signed in, there will be a, um, a indication for you to sign in. This is very important when you're using Scopus because then it allows you to also use the personalized features of Scopus. It gives you a dashboard. It gives you all the searches that you have done and that you have saved. You have access again all the alerts that you've set up. And importantly, also you can set up um, your preferred um, export method and your preferred reference management system. So going to the sign in and using the sign in um, is really recommendable. <clears throat> right, so then you will see that there are various search options. There's, um, uh, you can search for documents, which is a basic literature search then. You can also search for authors and affiliations. So I'm going to focus on these two. Um, and then we'll also talk about journals, uh, journals which you will find under sources. So doing a search um, in Scopus, um, you can do, you can start, I'm just going to do a very simple one to give you an idea of the function, functionality. So looking for, um, for instance, literature on COVID-19. You type your keyword. It's useful to also use the search tips because in the search tips, it's going to guide you in terms of how best to uh, string your different um, keywords together using and and or. Uh, you can also, it also gives you advice about how to use the wildcard. So if you are not sure about the spelling or you've forgotten something, then you can add a wildcard um, and the search engine will then search for anything that is linked to that specific term. If you are looking for a phrase, you can use, for instance, a inverted commas, so uh, COVID-19 virus, for instance. You can use inverted commas to indicate to the search engine that you are looking for a phrase. Uh, this is what we call a loose phrase. Um, so it will also recover, it will also retrieve all documents where virus is in front of COVID. But if you want always the exact phrase, you can use the curly brackets. So I'm just indicating here how to use the, uh, the curly brackets, right. But use the search tips um, because they are very well explained. I'm not going to use them now. And then you can also select in what field would you like uh, the search engine to, soup to, to look. Um, so you can select uh, the default is article, title, abstracts and keywords, but you can change this. So if you want to search only for um, publications where COVID-19 virus is in the article title, you select article title for instance, or any of the other fields. You can also add, and you can say, looking specifically for COVID-19 and anxiety, 
then you can also use limit, uh, uh, the, the limiting feature. So you can select in terms of the number of years that you want to search for, say from 2018, even though it's COVID-19, you will only find 2020 documents. Uh, you can search for specific types of, um, of documents, etc. So when you have all your keywords identified, you can go and search, go onto the search. And then the results are shown on a, what we call the document results page. So you will see in the left hand side, there's a, a panel, we call this the refine panel, and it's possible to refine your search further using um, all the all the, the variants that are um, that are indicated here. So you can select between open access and other types of publications uh, by author subject area. You can identify document type. So there's a large number of refined options. I'm just going through them: affiliation, the funding sponsor, the country, uh, the language. Um, all of these. So these refine options are really useful because it narrows down your search and it really makes your search results a lot more accurate, which is important. Right below the, res the number of results, you will find an option to edit. So you can go back and if you've made a mistake, edit, you can save. So this is important. So any of the searches that you've saved um, will be kept within your, in your profile. You can also set an alert. So if you want to be updated about any new literature that is added to the database about this topic, you can set an alert and um, all your alerts will show here and you will be notified on a weekly or daily basis as you've indicated when you would like to receive alerts about your specific topic. Right. So then on the, on the more on the right hand side, it's also possible then to sort your sort your results. You can sort by the date, by the number of citations by alphabetically. Um, various different ways of doing this. Um, cited by highest, I've selected that. So you can see the publication that has received in this topic that has received the highest number of citations, 114 example. From here, you can, you can actually go into the title and look at the details. Um, so either looking first at the abstract, which is advisable so that you can see if it's relevant from the abstract, you can go to the title, click on the title of the publication and more details will be shown. So on, on the details page, you will find all the bibliographic information, the source title, the authors, the affiliations, the abstract, as well as the references um, will be listed. Um, we we'll also indicate uh, the keywords that were used as well as the, the topics of prominence. Um, so these topics are groups of publications that share citations and when their citation density is of a certain level, we can make the assumption that these authors, uh, these publications are all related to the same topic. And then the topics are uh, uh, ranked um, in terms of their, of their prominence and, then, um, and, and uh, this prominence is determined by, th by three metrics, recent citations, recent downloads and the um, reputation of the journal in which it was published. So you can see from a document to which specific topics uh, is related to this document. On the right hand side, you will find metrics um, about this, uh, this specific article to give you an indication of the, 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 the number of times that it has been cited as well as information about um, the societal interest within this. So how many times has it been shared by Mendeley readers? Has it been blogged? Has it been in the mass media? Has it appeared in, uh, in social media? So you get a very good sense of how this uh, article or this publication has contributed to science and how it has been um, shared in terms of, uh, of social media. So going back, one of the 
important functionalities, as I mentioned earlier, just going back to my results, is to look at the trend information. So you click on the analyze search results. And as I mentioned, in this analyze search results, it provides you with a global um, overview of, of, the, of the topic in, sense, in the sense of the number of publications, which is, this is a very recent topic, so we don't have a lot of range there, but you will see uh, the number of uh, publications there in terms of the um, journals in which they were published. Um, I've selected only one publication there, I think now. Okay. But it also provides you who are the top authors, who are the top affiliations, the document types within this um, research area, etc. Okay, so analyzing search results um, gives you that, that global overview and what are the trends and the patterns within your, your research area that you are looking at. Um, then looking at the, some of the utilities here, you, when you select uh, the publications that you have interest in, you can save them directly here to your reference manager, to um, Mendeley or to um, RefWorks, or you can select another export format and export all the uh, records. You can also download, download up to 50 publications at a time. That means it will download the full text of that article or publication if it is available. Um, and you can um, see a citation overview, you can save this to a list. So a, a whole number of um, utilities, uh, what you can do with your, with your results, right? Uh, I want to go back to the search and show you very quickly that there are also what the author profiles look like in Scopus. So you select authors under the search, indicate the author that you would like to just go back. Made a spelling mistake. Right, so you identify the author that you would um, like to analyze. Uh, that could be yourself or any other author that you're interested. Click on the name of the author. Um, and the author profile then will appear. The author profile um, gives a comprehensive overview of all and summarizes all the information that we have in Scopus about this author. So that would be all the affiliations uh, that the author has used in terms of, um, of publishing from and how he has perhaps moved from one institution to another institution. Um, all the name variants, the subject areas, and then an overview of the number of publications, the number of citations, as well as the H index of the, of the researcher. Um, there's also a, a, an explanation of how the H index is uh, compiled. I'm not going to go into this, um, but just to show you that this is, uh, they are uh, visualizations to indicate to you how this how this H index um, was calculated, as well as information about the citations, about all the co-authors of this, of this researcher. It also provides you with um, the possibility for you to edit your author profile. And this is very necessary. It's, it's really important to take ownership of your own author profile and make sure from time to time that all your publications um, that are published in Scopus Index journals, that they are linked to your author profile. And if there are any errors to, uh, or you need to merge a publication with your author profile, um, there's the possibility to, the, to do that through the, the edit author profile. 
Um, you will also find that there's um, an extensive uh, citation overview. So by article, there's an indication of how many times each of the articles have been, um, have been cited. Right. So a lot more there, but I want to just give you a very quick overview um, and not go into too much detail so that we can rather answer your specific questions. And then finally, um, I want to just highlight the sources. Under sources, you will find all the publications or the journals that are indexed in Scopus. More than journals, actually, it's all the serials publications. So you will find, I mentioned 24 and a half thousand journals that are indexed by Scopus, those are the active journals, uh, but we also keep uh, retrospective journals that have perhaps been discontinued, et cetera. So those are, are also available. To find uh, journal information, you can do that by subject and then select it, a specific um, subject area. So say it's uh, horticulture, a list of all the journals that are indexed in Scopus will appear. So 105 journals related to horticulture um, and the number of metrics then indicated to give you an idea of the reputation of this journal the, and the, the volume of publications and citations. Um, for each journal, there's also a profile, a journal profile page. On the journal profile page, information is then uh, provided about how the site score of the journal has been calculated. And this is an indication of the reputation of the journal. Right. So here you can see the name of the, of the journal. Uh, you can see the publisher information, etc. And then the site score of 4.43, how that is calculated is the citation count of a particular year divided by the number of documents published in the preceding three years. And that then gives you basically an average number of times that articles in this journal is cited over a three year period, which is a strong indication of what is the, what is the reputation, what is the quality of this journal. Um, but it is important here to keep in mind that uh, journals within, uh, within different subject areas um, have different citation cultures. So you can't compare the site score of a journal within the biomedical sciences with one in social sciences and, um, and in arts and humanities. So for that reason, we also have the journal metrics that are, um, that are normalized. Um, so there's the SNP, the source normalized impact per paper, and this is then normalized then for, this, for the subject area. It's the number of citations received relative to the expected citations received for a specific subject area. And then the SNP um, uh, SJR, Schemago Journal Rank, is also a normalized journal metric, which also takes into consideration the subject um, area um, and also it weights the citation from the, um, the quality of the journal from where the citation is, is made. So the uh, citing journal also plays a role there. So different ways of being able to evaluate what is the quality of a journal. Um, right, I want to stop here because uh, I just wanted to give you a quick overview of how, why it's important to use uh, uh, Scopus, how do you use Scopus, what can you expect to see in Scopus, um, and we'll um, go over and see if we can answer some of your questions. Thank you so much, Lucia, for your uh, presentation and going through Scopus on a quick demo. Now I hand it over to Yahya to answer uh, a few of your questions on the Q&A box. To you, Yahya. Thank you. Thank you, Lucia, and thank you, Nadine. Uh, can you hear me well? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, I'll go over uh, some of the questions which have been asked uh, during the course of this webinar in the Q&A box. Uh, so one of the questions was asking about, uh, can we publish uh, French papers? Uh, and the answer is uh, yes, you can uh, publish uh, your French paper or any other language for that matter, as long as the journal permits that. Uh, Scopus requires uh, all journals that uh, 
they are publishing in an in a language other than English, that the abstract uh, and title be translated in English, uh, but other than that, the full text can remain uh, in the language uh, you prefer to publish in. So the answer is yes, as long as the journal you are submitting to is indexed in Scopus and uh, does uh, does uh, publish the papers in the language uh, you are interested in other than English. So there was another question about what is the extent of Scopus? Uh, so if I understand this question correctly, uh, the extent I'd say uh, that currently we are at around, uh, Scopus is indexing around 80 million uh, different documents. So it's indexing, of course, the abstract authors and bibliographical information. Uh, of more than 80 million records. Uh, it's currently has uh, sources and titles from over 5,000 uh, publishers. Uh, currently, there are uh, over 24,000 actively indexed journals in Scopus. Uh, I believe it was over uh, 100,000 conferences and 200,000 books. So this is about the extent of Scopus. Um, there was also a couple of questions about uh, ARXIV uh, and Scopus. So one of the questions was, what's the difference between them? Uh, well, uh, it's, uh, they're quite different, actually. So Scopus is a data, uh, an indexation database uh, of peer-reviewed literature. Uh, ARXIV, from what I have read and what I know about it, and uh, just to say I'm not an expert on it, but I know that it's an open access repository. So they are very different. And it's an open access repository uh, containing manuscripts which are not peer reviewed. They have maybe, uh, they, they had a, a, a moderator has looked at them, but they are not necessarily peer reviewed. So in, in that sense, uh, ARXIV is not a journal, it's a repository and it's not an indexing uh, database as Scopus as well. Um, so th this was answered. So there was another question about uh, if something is available on ARXIV, could it be published in Scopus? And best to my knowledge is yes, because ARXIV is an open access repository of preprints and they're not peer reviewed. So they're not peer reviewed and it's not uh, submit. It's not like submitting the paper for a journal. So do, this does not interfere with with the point that you cannot submit the same abstracts, the same art manuscript to two journals. So it's in fact it's not a journal. So I don't see a problem uh, for publishing your preprint on Eric's IV, IV and then submitting it for a peer-reviewed journal for consideration for publication. Okay. Um, one of the questions was, I cannot access Cybal although I have an account on Scopus. Well, uh, Scopus and Cybal are two uh, solutions provided by Elsevier, but they require different subscriptions. So if you are able to uh, to access Scopus but not Cybal, that probably means that your institute is not subscribed to Cybal. How can you subscribe to Cybal? This, is, uh, this goes through the institute. So it's an institution subscription. So if you want to ask about that, uh, we please refer you to the library or the research office of your institute uh, to ask about uh, subscribing to Cyber. Okay, so um, there was also a question about the state of the art. Can it be submitted in a journal although you have no contribution? So if I understand this question correctly, uh, if you, if by state of the art, you mean like a review article. So yes, you can write a review article uh, and submit it to a journal for publication, although you have not actually performed the uh, research work uh, within the topic. You are basically giving a, a full picture, an overview of what has been published in this topic it's a review article. So yes, you can publish a review article in a journal, although you have not uh, contributed to the research uh, yet. Okay. Uh, there was also a question about what is the difference between indexed and impacted journal? Okay, so um, I guess 
some people will be using those terms interchangeably. Uh, by index, we normally mean uh, that it's available in a trusted, well-respected database. For example, Scopus being one of those databases. So anything in Scopus, any journal which is actively indexed in Scopus will say that this is an indexed uh, journal. Uh, I guess impacted could be a little bit vaguer. Impacted, I would assume uh, when people refer to this term, they would be meaning that uh, the journal actually has uh, metrics associated with it, like metrics like the site score impact factor or the SJR or the SNP, the source normalized impact per paper. So if a journal has these metrics, then we can say it is a, a journal with journal level metrics, or you can say impacted somehow. And uh, Lucia has already shown us uh, how to locate uh, the metrics for these journals. Uh, now there was a question in this case, I'll do a live demo about how to search for the best journal to submit my article to. So in fact, in this case, uh, there, there are a couple of ways you can do that. So if you open the uh, Scopus uh, website, and if you click under sources, you'll have the full list of uh, sources which are available on Scopus. Okay, in the meantime, while it's opening, there was one question about what are the requirements for a reviewer to be a reviewer in Scopus Journal. So in fact, in this case, you want you will be a reviewer for the journal or journal which is indexed in Scopus. So in that case, I would, uh, I would maybe say, uh, propose that you can contact the editor in chief or, or one of the editors in the editorial board of the journal you're interested to uh, be a reviewer in and ask them to add you to the list of reviewers to that uh, journal. Okay, so here we have the full the list of Scopus sources, both active and inactive. So uh, one of the ways to search for the best journal to submit my article to would be doing it through a subject area. So if you click here and you filter by the subject area rather than the title, and you can st start with writing about what's the subject area uh, you want to submit to. So, so let's say I am someone working in material sciences. So if I click on apply so now we're applying for a filter to 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 only show the <laughs> journals which have material sciences as one of its um, subject areas in this case here you have the full list of journals which include material sciences as one of them so if you say which one is the best one uh, best is is a bit uh, vague to define but i mean if uh, you can compare between them within the site score because in this case we are comparing journals having the same subject area. So in this case we can compare directly compare between uh, their site scores. And if you open any one of them, for example, if we open the Journal of Nature Energy, here we can know okay the scope's coverage years, who's the publisher of that journal, which subject areas uh, it's publishing in. And if we go down here, we can see uh, the journal level metrics. So we have the site score, which is 26.88, the SJR, which is 16, and the SNP, which is eight. As we said, for the SJR and the SNP, the benchmark is one, so anything above one is above the world average. Regarding the site score as an absolute value, we can't make much of it, but when we look at it in terms of where it stands within its subject area, we see that, uh, in material sciences under the sub-subject area of electronic, optical, and magnetic materials, it would be ranked number two out of 225 journals. So it's number two. And then this subject area, which puts it in the 99th percentile or the top 1% of journals within that subject area, and so on. So the, this is one way to search for uh, a journal you can publish in. Another way to do it would be uh, by doing a normal uh, document search. Okay, so I don't know. Let's uh, choose uh, 
any search phrases I already had from before. And here you'll have the documents uh, appearing for this uh, search result. If you click on analyze search results, this could also be a, a way using Scopus to find uh, which journals to publish in by, by observing and analyzing, seeing the search results uh, of the key phrases which I defined in Scopus, where are they publishing uh, the most? And in this case, if you go down here, you'll see you have the documents by source. And if you click on it, you can see that uh, using these search uh, key phrases I used, which is solar resource modeling, we'll see that uh, people are mainly publishing in first solar energy journal, which makes sense, followed by the renewable energy journal, followed by the applied energy journal, and so on. So in this case, you can also have a list of journals to publish in uh, based on the search criteria uh, you used uh, you used in uh, on Scopus. Of course, then you can just click on any of those journals to have the profile of that journal and see uh, is it uh, still actively indexed in Scopus? Who's the publisher? Uh, where's the journal homepage? Uh, how to redirect you to the journal homepage? And of course, you have the uh, journal level met metrics like the site score, the SGR, the SNP, and then you have the site score rank and the site score percentile. So this answers the question about how to search for the best journal to submit my article to. Uh, there was a question about Scopus is only showing the authors and uh, sources. So in fact, in this case, you are probably uh, on the Scopus preview account. So you have not logged in uh, to your account. So in this case, you will only be able to see the author search and the sources uh, tabs, but you will not be able to see uh, the search uh, tab for the documents and institution searches. If I go back to the previous share. Okay. Okay, so there was also a question about uh, how to check if the article is indexed in Scopus or not. So in fact, you can do this very easily by just uh, A, you can search for the journal in which the, do the document is published in to check uh, whether uh, it is um, indexed in Scopus or not. Uh, or you can just very simply search by the title of the document uh, to see if it will appear in your search results. So you can just, uh, for example, here, I'll search by the article title, and if you write the article title you are looking for to confirm whether it's in fact uh, included in the Scopus database or not. Okay. Uh, there was uh, a question about the difference between open access and other options. So normally, open access uh, means that the after the paper after the manuscript is accepted for for publication it will be available for free for anyone to access across the globe so anyone can download the paper whether or not they have a subscription with the publisher uh, who published that paper uh, but in this case the article processing charges are normally covered by the author so normally if you want to publish an open access article you need to pay uh, to the journal because the journal has uh, some article processing charges. The other way to do it is that you can publish uh, in a journal for free, so there will be no cost on the side of the author, but in this case, it will normally be a subscription-based model, meaning that in order for the researchers to be able to access your work and read your article, they will need to subscribe uh, with, with that journal or with that publisher. Normally, such subscriptions are uh, uh, are carried out by the library of your institute. So normally, it's not the end user or the researcher who subscribes, but it's the library which subscribes to a number of publishers and uh, provides those researchers for its research uh, for provides those resources for its researchers. So this is generally the case that if you want to publish open access, you as an author must pay article processing charges or the other, on the other, the other way is that you publish uh, for free, but people will pay to access your research article. Okay, and there was one more question about uh, a specific journal actually. So 
I R E C E, which, if I'm correct, is the International Review of Civil Engineering. So the question is: This journal is in Scopus, but paid, uh, and some authority, uh, without mentioning any names, uh, refuse it. So, regarding whether the authorities refuse it or not, this is something um, uh, I cannot. Uh, comment on, but the journal uh, is so far indexed in Scopus. Uh, it does not say that it has been discontinued. If it has been, there will be between circle brackets that it has been discontinued in Scopus. Uh, and under the, um, uh, and of course here we have the publisher, what the publisher is, praiseworthy price. And in the journal homepage, which I uh, was redirected by just clicking here, and uh, I opened it and then under the uh, about, under the details of this uh, journal. So if I clicked on about, I found that the uh, it does indeed have a submission fee. So in fact, this journal uh, is has both open access fees. So if you want your paper to be published as open access in this journal, it will cost you a thousand euros. If you want it to be subscription based, so they actually the journal will also charge you almost 300 euros. So. Uh, this is uh, this is the model of this journal. Uh, as an end researcher, it's up to you whether to use this journal or not. Uh, but in the end of the day, uh, if your work is being assessed by a specific governing body, uh, at least in my case, I would like to use the journal as a matter which will differ between researcher and researcher and their preferences. So those are the questions I marked uh, during uh, Lucia's presentation. Uh, Nadine, have you seen any other questions you'd like me to answer before handing over to you? Uh, yes, please, uh, Yahya, just one question. Uh, could you cl clarify the SJR and SNP metrics uh, briefly? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so if we go back, uh, for example, here. So, okay, so we know that that's let me go through the three metrics. So we have the site score, which is basically uh, uh, how many citations were received uh, in the past year to the how many documents, uh, how many citations were received in one year to the number of documents published during the previous three years of that journey. So if, if for example, we are talking about the site score for 2018, we'll see how many citations were received in 2018 for the documents for the number of documents published in that journal during the previous three years. So in this case, we have 73 citations received for 93 documents published in that journal over the past three years. So it's basically somehow an average uh, of the citations received for the documents uh, published in that journal over the past uh, three years. So this is a size score. Someone might, might ask, why are we uh, talking about the size score to 2018, whereas we're in 2020 now? So in fact, we are always uh, we consider a year to be complete in June the following year. So in June 2020, which is this month, the site score will be dated to be the site score of 2019. So in June 2020, we will consider uh, 2019 to be a complete year. So please stay tuned. This should happen within a week or so, uh, the updates for the site score. Uh, now, if we talk about the SGR, the SGR is the CIMACO journal rank, which is a metric uh, measuring not only the number of citations, but rather the quality of citations uh, the documents of the journal are receiving, meaning that not all citations are equal. When the documents of this uh, journal are receiving citations from other journals of high quality, so this somehow increases the quality of publications of this journal and uh, and increases the SGR for that journal. So it's basically uh, a measure, which means that not all citations are equal. It is field normalized. And in this case, one is the benchmark. So if you have a SGR above one, it means that in general, uh, the, the documents of this uh, journal are receiving uh, citations from better journals than if you have an SGR lower than one, which would mean that the citations received uh, by this journal are from maybe lower quality journals. Now, if we talk about the SNP, the source normalized impact per paper, this is also field normalized. And in this case, it's measuring the raw impact per paper or some uh, somehow the citations uh, per publication measured uh, public of the publications uh, of the documents published in this journal compared to 
what's the expected citations per publication from articles of journals of the same subject area. So in this case, also one would be the benchmark. Anything lower than one would mean that in average, the citations received by the documents in this journal are lower uh, compared to peer journals of the same subject areas. And if it's above one, then it's above uh, the Hello. Daddy, can you hear me? Yes, uh, Yahya, your uh, voice just uh, was cut and then back again. Okay. Um, did, 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 was, my, was the question answered or yes. was my voice? Okay, great. Thank you very much. So, uh, you're welcome. Any other questions? I think uh, that's all. I can take it from here. Great. Thank you. Uh, so, a question um, from Anonymous about how to check if the article is indexed in Scopus or not. Is there a site or a platform where we can check the indexation in Scopus? Okay, so uh, the article is not indexed. The journal is indexed. The journal that published the article. So, uh, so you can have a list of the indexed journals in Scopus simply by clicking, clicking on source or uh, uh, on the top of the page, on the home page of Scopus, let me show you. So, at any time you can click on sources, as you see on the page, and have a list of uh, all the indexed journals in Scopus. L'accès de Scopus est dû à l'accès université. Alors, euh, euh, s'il vous plaît, vous devez consulter votre université pour savoir si votre université est abonnée avec Elsevier sur Scopus. Et puis, vous pouvez accéder à Scopus directement avec votre email institutionnel. Seulement, vous, vous, vous devez euh, activer euh, l'accès à distance à travers euh, le remote access qui se trouve euh, à la fin de la page sur la page d'accueil de Sciences Direct. Donc, euh, je vais vous montrer maintenant. Voilà sur euh, l'écran Sciences Direct. Et à la fin de la page, Ok, maintenant sur la page. À la fin de la page, il y a euh, le bouton « Remote Access ». Vous tapez au-dessus et puis vous allez avoir une autre page où vous devez mettre votre euh, email institutionnel. Et puis, vous tapez sur « Continue euh, ». Ensuite, vous allez, euh, avoir, euh, vous allez recevoir dans votre boîte « Inbox euh, » un email euh, de Sciences Direct d'Elsevier pour confirmer votre euh, activation. Donc, euh, et comme ça, vous allez avoir un accès à distance de chez vous sans avoir besoin d'être au présentiel euh, euh, à votre, dans votre université. Et quand vous allez avoir cet accès à distance sur Sciences Direct, vous, la, vous, avez, vous allez l'avoir euh, automatiquement sur Scopus et, euh, et euh, toutes les, euh, voilà, les, les solutions d'Elsevier que vous avez euh, dans votre pays selon l'abonnement de votre université ou bien votre institution. Is peer reviewing the main criterion for indexing a journal into Scopus or there are other criteria? Of course, peer review is a, is a, a very important criteria. However, there is a lot of other criteria and these criteria are uh, evaluated by an independent committee. And uh, if you can see on the screen, uh, I am sharing with you uh, from Elsevier website, and it's uh, it's available for everyone to uh, visit and read uh, the content policy and selection for Scopus. So you can see the evaluation process, the journal se selection criteria, and all the details about it. 
as well as uh, the books, uh, the selection criteria for books. You can read all about it here on lcb.com. Solutions, Scopus, how Scopus works, content, content policy, and selection. How to create an account in Scopus? You can um, definitely create it with your institutional email, but make sure you activate your remote access using the steps that I just shared with you uh, on how to activate your uh, institutional email. Of course, you have to validate first that your institutional uh, or your university is one of the uh, universities in your country that have uh, the uh, subscription with Elsevier. Um, in, in Morocco, uh, you have to be sure that your university is listed in um, uh, uh, the, the, the list of universities under, under the consortium uh, in East, uh, in Tunisia under the consortium Knudist. Normally, all the public universities are listed under, under the, uh, the consortium. So if your university is a public university, you should have access, uh, just uh, activate your institutional email using uh, the remote access uh, at the end of the page, like I just showed you. How to improve my research to accept publish on Scopus? Okay, so you do not publish on Scopus. Scopus is a database. It's not a uh, publishing platform. Uh, you cannot uh, publish on Scopus. However, uh, you can publish uh, uh, for any, uh, 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 sorry, with any journal that is indexed in Scopus and then your article or your document will appear in Scopus as it is part of the journal indexed in, in, in Scopus. How to improve your research? Uh, well, this, uh, this is another discussion that uh, we uh, tackled in, uh, in, a, in more than a, a two hours webinar. Uh, an article uh, publishing and books publishing process that you can consult on our um, YouTube uh, page, uh, uh, Elsevier Africa. I thought Scopus is owned primarily by Elsevier. How are their other publishers included? Yes, Scopus is uh, owned by Elsevier, but Scopus is a database uh, that is uh, uh, that has more than 5,000 uh, uh, other publishers other than Elsevier. So in the, 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 the main objective of Scopus is to, to help the author uh, to have all the, um, uh, on the indexed journals, of course, in Scopus, all the information uh, that uh, he or she needs in order to optimize his uh, research process from how to collaborate with other authors, how to find the sponsor and the organism uh, de uh, financement to finance his uh, research, how to uh, make a team uh, of authors and work together on one research, how to find the best uh, uh, journal uh, to publish. So it is mainly helping the author to um, optimize his research process and to manage his research process to have better visibility on uh, the stage of scientific research. So uh, it has to include all uh, uh, the, the, the editors or all the publishers, uh, of course, uh, that uh, publish in journals that are meeting the criteria to be indexed uh, in Scopus. Uh, how to get a journal indexed in uh, by Scopus? So as I mentioned, there is a page uh, with all details on Elsevier.com solutions slash Scopus, how Scopus works, that you can find on Elsevier.com and that uh, you can read all the de details of the criteria to for a journal to be indexed and the evaluation process and learn all about the details. J'ai déjà fait ça, me donne une erreur et ne pas connaître mon email institutionnel. Si vous avez euh, eu un, une, une euh, erreur et vous n'avez pas pu avoir votre accès à distance à travers votre email institutionnel, vous devez euh, premièrement euh, euh, supprimer vos caches et vos cookies et puis ouvrir une nouvelle page euh, et faire le, le processus 
de nouveau. Et sinon, vous pouvez m'envoyer un email, je peux vous aider pour régler ce problème. Ok, euh, je vais seulement donner euh, euh, un bref sur les différentes métriques. Donc, euh, les différentes métriques de l'auteur de l'article et revue que vous pouvez trouver sur euh, euh, Scopus. Les métriques de la revue, Site Score, Impact Factor, SNP et euh, SGR, euh, comme euh, Yahya et Lucia euh, ont déjà euh, présenté. Le Site Score, c'est les citations de, par exemple, 2018, si on, on évalue l'année 2018. Euh, divisé par les publications de, des trois euh, années précédentes, 2017, 2016, 2015. L'impact factor, c'est similaire, mais au lieu de trois années précédentes, euh, seulement deux années précédentes, c'est-à-dire 2017, 2016 seulement. Et puis, euh, SNP et SGR, et comme c'était expliqué déjà, c'est la même chose, mais dans le SNP, euh, c'est la même chose que SiteScore, mais les citations ici sont normalisées à par rapport à leur source, c'est-à-dire les, les, les revues qui ont cité euh, sont considérées dans le score, c'est-à-dire une revue euh, de haute qualité, qui est euh, de, de quartier euh, plus avancé. Ce n'est pas comme une autre revue qui, euh, par exemple, euh, euh, qui, est, qui a un quartier moins avancé. Euh, pour le euh, SGR, c'est-à-dire c'est pourquoi Simago Junior Ranks, pourquoi il y a le Junior Rank dans euh, le SGR, parce que ça, 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 c'est un métrique, c'est une métrique de prestige. Donc euh, les citations sont différenciées d'après le classement de la rue. Euh, je vous recommande tous de visiter euh, les différentes métriques, le webinaire qui est déjà sur Elsevier Africa sur Facebook et aussi sur euh, 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 YouTube, euh, la chaîne YouTube de Elsevier Africa pour avoir plus d'informations sur les différentes métriques qui se trouvent sur euh, Scopus et les autres euh, plateformes quand même. Uh, donc, uh, that's it. Thank you very much, everyone, for participating. Thank you, uh, Yahya and Lucia, for uh, the presentation and the demos and answering the questions for the participants. Uh, if you want to add anything to you. Thank you. Thank you, Nadine. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Nadine. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. All right. Thank you, everyone, and uh, see you in the Prussian webinars. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.